Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Jacob. Hey everybody. How are you doing, man? Oh, I've been busy week. Ups and downs all over the place. At least I'm not in the same place that Silver's been. Oh man. Yeah, I mean, Silver is a busy boy. And yeah, I am. Yeah, I don't know, I know he's just busy. And that car crash didn't make help either. Oh no, man. Did, did he talk to you about it? Well, you mentioned it. Ah, yeah. Oh, well, um, we, we'll keep that story for him to share. Uh, we, we don't really know much about it. But uh, he's safe, by the way. He's safe, by the way. And... That's one good upside. Mm. <clears throat> but anywho, uh, in today's episode review, we are going to review... The fourth issue of My Little Ponies, gener- sorry, My Little Pony Generations. Uh, in this issue, the main six team up with ponies from another world to stop Crackle and Dyer and their havoc wreaking schmooze. So, first impressions are in order. And Jacob, what do you think? Well, uh, in the previous issue, I said that uh, the cracks in the facade are slowly starting to show. And in this issue, I think they're starting to fall off. You mean cracks or art? Like, Well, uh, there's a few things that, uh, I don't know, don't, don't seem right. I, I I'm mean... just going to put it like that. Oh. All right, all right. Anything more? Uh... <coughs> Yeah, I'm done. Uh, all right, a pretty short, uh, pretty short first impressions. Um, I, I, I was kind of puzzled by the G4 ponies. Sorry, no, by the first generation ponies and how they look. But as I kept reading it, it didn't really bother me that much. What bothered me is that, ah, oh, man, it, it's the thing that we've been mentioning since issue one, and it's the reuse of i won't say reuse it's uh the tracing yeah, from tracing. the show and at first it didn't bother me but as we go on as we keep going deeper and deeper and deeper it's is becoming a hindrance true true but overall the story's still good <clears throat> so anywho um if you have not read this comic pause here and go do so Welcome back. So we start off the adventure with where we left off. Our heroes, the main six, um, met up with their G1 count. No, I won't say counterpart. G1 friends, yes. And uh, them commenting how they look. Uh, they, they look strange. And as a G4 guy myself, yeah, they look strange. Um, I'm not used to them, but still, um, they're ponies. And Pinkie Pie is the first to say hello, but before she can officially say hello, she trips on a rock and rolls down a hill. Oh no, uh, that's bad. And it looks like, um, yeah, she, she's all banged up. Uh, good thing though that the other ponies, uh, the G1 ponies, are kind of okay. They're, they're not hostile. Um, one of them says, I think some introductions and bandages are in order. So they take the main six plus starlight to their home and give a brief lowdown on what happened. And I'm going to pause here because headaches ensuing for me. So Jacob, what do you think, man? Well, we... We immediately start with an oddity when the one of the G1 ponies warns Pinky about the rock and she trips. The panel though makes it look like she just stubbed her toe. <laughs> oh man, yeah. It's... Yeah, I didn't even notice that one. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, but uh, on the whole uh, thing that follows. Uh, I'm kind of at the loss at this point since I never watched the G1 movie and I only saw the smooth song, which to be fair, it, it is catchy. But w- what I want to know 
are these G1 character and characters here that are directly involved in that movie or are they just random ones? Because I mean, uh, from the flashback that follows later, it's clear that Firefly was there, but that just brings up the obvious problem of the story at this point. Because, uh, well, my frustration comes out, as mentioned last time, and I'm probably, many of the other readers are kind of frustrated, is the false advertising. I mean, if you go back to issue one, uh, the cover showed the G4 characters with their G1 counterparts upon which they were based, but mm -hmm. other than the surprise and apple check, they don't appear, and even those two are there only for exposition and a joke. Yep, and um, I, I totally agree with you there, because they hype us up for that moment. They kind of red herring it, or uh, uh, Chekhov's gun it, and showed us like, hey, uh, we might see them, oh, these were the inspirations, and uh, wouldn't you like to see what would happen? I mean, it's... It's, it's going to, okay, when you have them both on the screen or whatever it is, their personalities are not going to be 100% the same, but at least you're going to have some humor. Uh, Surprise and Pinkie Pie, probably they'll banter for a bit and do stuff. And probably um, Posey, I think, that is Fluttershy's counterpart, they'll... Um, interact and whatnot. I mean, you, you, you want to see the interaction. You, you want to see the original interacting with their future or the reimagined counterparts. And yeah, yeah. You, you want to see that, but no, we, we didn't get them. And in all honesty, <clears throat> who are these ponies? And I'm not being mean, by the way, but like, who are these ponies? Yeah, I agree. I mean, before they uh, start the exposition, they do G1 uh, uh, ponies banter between one another so that you get the names what they are. One is Liquidy Split, one's Lofty, and another one's Galaxy. But uh, as I said, I didn't watch the movie, so uh, do, you, do you have any idea if any of these ponies or even G1 ponies or whatever appeared in that movie. I, I mean, we know that Firefly does appear. I believe some of them are like uh, uh, you forgot to mention Minty, but the problem is, uh, it, it it doesn't really matter if it's if they're callbacks from the original or not. Um, the artists have a full set of ponies they can use, so yeah, uh, they could. Even if they didn't use Firefly or whoever and whatnot uh, to be the quote-unquote <coughs> uh, main cast for this comic, they can just use whoever. But the problem is, for us, we got no idea who they are. Like, yeah, you mentioned, you mentioned names like Galaxy, Minty, Lofty, uh, Liquidy Split, and so on. Yeah, um, I, I read some, I, I noticed a bit, but... Problem is, who's who? Like, I'm still confused on who's Lickety Split. Galaxy, I kind of get because she has stars on, uh, on her butt, but that's about it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> as I said, the, the, the beginning's a bit of a disappointment. Yeah, so. I mean, it's a, big, it's a big letdown for something that's already planned or no, it's something that is already hyped. Because we as readers who read this comic expect to go in with excitement to meet up with the original um, inspirations. But what when we arrive here, it's just utter... I won't say utter disappointment. I mean, it's just a, bit, a big letdown, yes. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> And because the, uh, this the G1 characters only start to uh, become revel uh, relevant uh, in the fourth issue of the five-issue five run, it really doesn't offer much of a uh, uh, chance for character banter and characterization. So, it's, yeah. it's at a loss, really. Yeah, and also you don't really get that uh, attachment. 
Like yes. y- when you read the comics or anything, you, you you kind of want to get to know the characters, get to have some kind of attachment to them. And that's why when we read this comic, we, we feel a bit of attachment to some of the bad guys, uh, especially uh, Violet, Violet Shivers. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we we kind of like her because, well, uh, they characterize her in a way that, hey, uh, she's bad, but not really that bad. She's just misunderstood and whatnot or doesn't have enough love in her life. So we, we kind of get her deal. And then with uh, Black Bell, she's kind of the cool edgelord pony. And people... Oh, sorry, uh, and the students admire her for it. And she kind of likes it, likes the admiration and whatnot. And Shadow Storm... Shadow Storm is just there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I I got nothing, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the pr- that's the problem because the other two. Well, uh, I'm gonna save it for when we get to them mm-hmm. later mm-hmm. down the line. Right. And uh, last on the list of annoyance is the first panel on page uh, four, I think, officially in the comics. It's Twilight Sparkle doing her train pose. Mm. Come again? Okay. Uh, back in G, uh, back in the olden days of uh, season one, when they sold toys, I, I think it's yeah. either a truck or train. I forgot. Uh, they have the standee of Twilight doing that pose. The oh, and she's just leaning a bit to the side, and she has uh, lifted the uh, leg. Yeah, and exactly. she's saying, so Zakura said the spell would bring us to the ponies who had the right magic, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it, that that is a very famous pose. Like, it's unforgettable. Oh. Man, I didn't see season one for so long. This, uh, so I guess it's kind of honestly past my radar. Oh yeah, but this, this irks me. And here's the thing. Take a look, see properly, where are her wings? Yeah, you can't really see them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, it's just it just irks me, man. Oh god. Yeah. I oh. Okay. Anyway, let's carry on. Let's carry on. Okay. So carrying on. Twilight just tells what's going on, and where they're from. And long story short, Twilight tells that hey, uh, there's some ponies. That's from your universe somehow. No, it's not ponies. It's uh, there's some kind of schmooze that comes from your universe into our world, and we don't have the means to stop it. And probably you guys can do something about it. And Galaxy here says, "Sure, um, we can help. Like there, there's, there's no problem because we've dealt with that." Uh, sorry, we've dealt with them before, and we can deal with them again, and we'll kick their butts harder this time. Yeah, and Galaxy says, um, witches, and like, uh, was it? Besides, it sounds like we didn't teach those witches enough of a lesson the first time. And Starlight, Fluttershy, and Twilight are shocked by witches. So, a pony. <laughs> One of the G1 ponies says, story time. And they start telling the tale before one of the ponies got interrupted by surprise. The <coughs> winged pinkie pie. Yep. And, uh, in all honesty, I got no idea who are the two other ponies that I just mentioned. <laughs> I feel bad. So... <laughs> Anywho, um, long story short, this is just a short synopsis of the My Little Pony movie. The original movie, this, by the way. The original? Yes, the first one, G1. Oh, this was the second one. I think it's all in one. There's only one My Little Pony movie, if I remember right. I thought that the T-Rex one was uh, the first one. <laughs> Shows me what I know. This could be the second. Uh, you know what? It's one of the movies. 
Let's go with that. (laughs) Well, while you do that, I am going to summarize uh, what they're talking about. So, long story short, they say that these witches are bad news and they want to cause mayhem for the ponies. Uh, The mama, the mother witch named uh, Haidia is the mother to the other two witch, uh, which are named... Rika and Dargol. Dargol, okay. So, they are tasked to gather materials to create the schmooze. Uh, they succeeded in getting the schmooze and, re- uh, and, and released them to the ponies of... I don't know what place is this, but yes, they, they managed to release it in their town. Uh, they caused a bit of trouble... But Megan, the human, <laughs> man, this is going to be so confusing for the G4 ponies when they ask, wait, what is Megan? A uh, human? What, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh, the things, the things to do with the... Yeah, but, I'm sorry. <laughs> um... <laughs> It's all good. So the hey, confusing me. mess that would be fun that would come out of this one if they started to ask questions. You know, they they still didn't really address um, the witches. Like I, I'm guessing the G4 ponies are just like, oh, witches! They're ponies with pointy hats and whatnot. Oh, <laughs> nope, nope. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. But anywho, Megan used her pendant to blast the schmooze, and they got rid of it. So, um, the uh, H- Haidia, she realized that, oh, the kids didn't really did the job properly because they didn't really get the most deadly and dangerous material to make the schmooze, which is called flume. Once they got it, the schmooze was unstoppable. And it wreaked havoc towards the town. And the ponies who were splattered by the smooths are ha, have negative effects like their parent um uh, sorry they're scared and didn't know what to do yes um i i'll say they're scared and paranoid so megan came along with flying friends and saved the day again yay <coughs> and with that they trap her in their Volcano and the end. So, yeah, that, that's a short summarization of what happened. On the next panel, we, we see that Rainbow Dash and Rarity got no idea what the hell they just said. Rarity yeah. probably 25%. <laughs> Rainbow Dash kind of one ear in, one ear out. Yeah, and we got another row with Rainbow Dash's iconic shock face. Slightly yeah, uh-huh. I mean, I I don't mind it that much. It's kind of get the effect across, but oh man, it's starting to get annoying. <clears throat> yeah. But anywho, um, we have a special guest. Yay! Here comes in Applejack. Yeehaw! She comes in bringing the artifact the pendant that Megan used to destroy the schmooze. And pony with wings that's purple says, thank you, Applejack. And ha ha ha, both Applejack says, welcome. Ha ha, ah, God. And she never appears again. Yep. So the surprise. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. (sighs) Okay, so... Uh, they they talk for a bit and they discuss about how to use the powers and so on and Twilight just says that oh sorry one of the wing ponies says um witches and something like that uh, have you seen any witches in your universe and so on and Twilight just says I I don't remember seeing any witches around Ponyville's and. We go to another scene, the volcano scene, where we see Dio and 
Gre- Grekel? Yeah, we, we see Grekel. Yeah, we see them uh, receiving mail, and said mail is from their mums, telling them how they're not, how, how useless they are, and how unproductive they are. And yeah, since they didn't send a letter, they assume that they're trash. Uh, Dyer gets into a hissy fit and blows up. And Grekel plays nice by making her tacos. And we get taco puns. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I, I still will be proud for this one. But nah, man. This is... <laughs> okay. I love puns <laughs> as the next person it does. But this one is just... How do I put this? It's... <clears throat> Mm, give me a second. I'm, I'm trying to think of a word. Okay. It seems force. Like they force the puns for the comic just because. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean. It's really not fitting them we're considering the, the other ones just got a bit of a. Yeah, I mean, oh, well, to put it lightly. Yeah, but but the thing is, the puns are not bad. They're they're kind of fun. But it's like, okay, you want to make taco puns, you make the witches make tacos. Okay, <laughs> uh, I mean it's, I won't say lazy, but it's kind of a contrivance where you kind of need to do it. It's a good thing that the witches know what tacos are. It adds more <laughs> questions that wait, what what is this universe's <laughs> thing? Where are they in this universe? Yeah. Do they have yeah. HBO? This just brings up more questions and since we've, we've taken so long to be in the uh in G1 universe we don't really get to explore this place much or anything. Mm, true. Man. It's one of those things where, oh God, I I don't even I don't even want to bring up the fact that the previous witches, um, who who were their names? The, the mothers, uh, give a second. Uh, uh, Rika, it's Rika and Dragle. Yeah, Rika and Dragle. They had to yeah. go out on a date. What? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, don't make me think about that. Yeah, you see? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Mm, all right, all right, all right. So, uh, taco puns aside. Yeah, but we also get confirmation that he just kicked the bucket. Yeah, uh-huh. uh huh. But, 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 that aside, we see that the. Uh, witches here are kind of not really rebelling, but kind of realizing that hey, we did good jobs. It's just our mother didn't really notice and appreciate us. Like, come on, we 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 try our best and so on. It's like our best is not good enough. Look, the police are fighting like the real housewife of Equestria. <laughs> oh, the jokes are gonna be dead. Yeah, but whose fault is is it then? I mean, okay, here we finally. S- uh, I need to address mm. a few things before I get to that. So can we finally see that only Greco seems to be using magic, but Dyer can't really. As you see in the, at the start when the airmail gets brought in, uh, one of them t- uh, tries to climb up to reach the letter, but the other one just flies up to pick it up. Yeah, I mean... So, <coughs> sorry. considering the previous... Uh, Letters, it's, it's clear that apparently, uh, wait, Dyer can't really use magic and only Greco does it, so that's why the the Smoonies are made from her magic. But, well, I, I mean, when we, we don't really get much confirmation of what Dyer can really do because, like, okay, what, what, what is her power set? Why is she a witch? Is she a witch by relation? I mean, okay, if it's that way, then uh, yeah, I guess. But 
what's the whole angle for this? Like we 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 don't really get to explore that, and yeah. we've seen them for four issues now. Yeah, and at this point, uh, I think uh, that has been kind of signed light because the whole thing seems to be starting to turn. As I mentioned last time, that it's a grackle thing at this point. But to the to the point that I want to say earlier. It seems that they didn't even reply back to their mom's uh, previous letter, so how could they even know that they're doing anything in the first place? So this is hardly on their mom's. Uh, this is hardly their mom's fault. Yeah, I mean, but still, it's one of those things where it's it's parental instinct. Where oh, if your child didn't really reply back, that means you are too afraid to reply. And that means you didn't do anything that they told you to do, and so on. So it's kind of a parental instinct thing, but at the same time, they they were just assholes for thinking that. Yeah, but in the, as we've seen, they don't really care that they basically uh, they're causing trouble in a dimension that's not their own. Yeah, I, I, and the letter specifically says, uh, the ponies, um from their world like uh any significant damage to those troublesome trotters yeah they, they yeah, yeah yeah so technically their mother's right by the way um those kids didn't really do their job properly <laughs> yeah oh yeah also <laughs> did greco's magical explosion cause her to turn into a sentient tree that grows tacos out of her hair I <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, but if you take a look, see at the plating, it's um, how do I put this? Oh no, there's more than one. Okay, my bad, no problem. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna move on ahead because back in Ponyville. <laughs> oh yeah, hold on. Sorry, one, one more thing. You said earlier that you like puns. Uh huh. Okay, here's a joke. Uh, mom, uh, mom comes home to her family and she, and she finds her husband uh, with a bloody axe in his hand and apparently he's just chopped up a baby. And you know what he says? What? It was an accident. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> okay. Right. okay, move on. Alright, dude. So anyway, uh, we go back to Ponyville and are joined by Shadow and Violet. They're kind of getting ready to put up the streamers and whatnot. And Shadow just says, where the hell is Pinkie Pie? She's, uh, she's late and I hate the sun. Uh, Violet just says, oh, Pinkie's not that bad. I mean, once you get past her excitement and all she she she's kind of cool but yeah she she's definitely late and we see somehow some shadow image i don't know how to describe it so well yeah uh, at this point we're beginning to see that violet bell using her magic to create the party streamers has caused the streamers to start becoming sentient because they've been infused by smooth hmm yes and talking about more ponies, uh, we see um, Black Bell, and she's floating menacingly in the air uh, with pure evil. Woo! And we are joined by Ocellus and Rika Rakozy Glow. Oh uh, yeah. Okay, this one I can forgive because it's one of those scenarios where <laughs> the comic writers. And artists don't really know what's going to happen in the season. And I'm guessing when they got the spreadsheet of characters to draw, they just pick out stuff that kind of makes sense for uh, to them. And since Cozy Glow at the point was not a bad guy, she was just a bit strange, but not a bad guy. They just put it there. Yeah. And once... Yeah, but she's got... So She's got such a unique and recognizable design. I think that's one of the issues I have with this. Yeah. I mean, it's a minor one, but still. Yeah, I mean, the, I, I totally agree with that. But that's like the recolor. And in, in all honesty, this is one of those scenarios where, oh, God, you, you, I understand. But, man, I would just... 
it would just have been much better if you just put Yona or um who now uh, Sandbar. But now, nah, man, you you wanted to put Cozy Glow, so yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, no! Wait, uh, this is after. God yeah, damn it! Th- yeah, this isn't happened. This comic wasn't made during when the show was still running. This was done way after. No, but you have to remember that everything that's done is way earlier than what we see. And this is what issue oh number four. No, uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, uh, whatever we see here and whatever we know, you have to push it way, way back. Because certain projects take time, uh, and uh, c- certain things aren't reveal aren't really revealed to the uh, comic artists and so on. So, like I mentioned before. Uh, I, I kind of forgive it, but man, they should have gotten a another character for it just to be on the safe side. But who they 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 didn't know, so can't blame them for that. Yeah, I suppose. <clears throat> but anyway, carrying on. Um, Violet here just says, "Um, Bell, why are these students here? I I thought it was kind of a." Uh, no class day because we were kind of volunteered to do the streamers and so on or decorations and Black Bells here just says oh um, those two are here for extra lessons uh, and they're my star students also I'm putting them doing forced labor as reward ha 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 see I'm evil so <laughs> with that um, we, we see that Ah, Black Bell have a soft spot for their students. Oh, for her students. Ah, aha, I see. And yeah. she, the other ponies tease her about it and so on. And let's see. Uh, the Shadow View says, Long sabotage means destroy. I, I got no idea what this is. Like, it's not really... Well, I think we're seeing the, perspect- the perspective from the... Uh, s- Smooth possessing streamers. I guess. Still, it, it's not really explained that well. <clears throat> but anyhow, we go into the hall, party, whatever it is, and we see that the pony starts to uh, put out the decorations. Um, Bell here just says, why don't we just destroy the, par- uh, the, the streamers and whatnot? And Violet here just says, no, not the decorations, uh, in a panicky way that shocks uh, Belle till she falls. And uh, Violet here just explains that, oh no, um, getting rid of the decorations doesn't stop us from, uh, doesn't stop the party happening. Uh, besides, they'll just make us make new ones. Ah, see? And okay, I, I can get it, I, I, I get it. And Bell just says, "Aha, uh, you, you, you made those. Um, let's say, uh, you made those uh, fancy noodles of doom that un- and ended up uh, ended up me. Wait, what? Did what? I'm I'm very confused. Wait, what? Appended. Up, up, that that means that she got tangled up and fall. Like, wait, what?" <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look that way. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I I kind of get it now because the streamers have a life of their own. But oh my god, the art! Okay, now I understand why. You want to know why? Why? It's because of the word bubble that's behind the the word bubble. Is Violet saying? Saying, um, I mean, getting rid of the decorations is covering what's uh, is covering the action. Yeah. That, that's why I didn't get what, what the oh god. <clears throat> so anyway, we see, uh, Violet teaching the other ponies how to do streamers of doom, and we we see the possum. The possum's there. 
uh, spying on the ponies or the schmozies. And, oh, she, he is shocked that, oh, they're decorating the party hall. Oh, no. And we see that there's scrolls there. And uh, we see the scrolls are scrolls of admiration for uh, Black Bell or Professor Black Bell. Uh, and someone has a crush. <laughs> <laughs> and one more point for Rainbow Dash Smug Face. <laughs> uh, wait, what? That's... Uh, oh! Mm. <laughs> ah! Hmm. Car- <laughs> God damn it! What? Mm. Ah. <laughs> oh, God damn it! <clears throat> yeah, I'm annoyed. God damn it! Okay, <clears throat> so anywho, um, looking at this, uh, the rat, I forgot his name. Uh, Trench. Trench, yes. Thank you. Uh, Trench took one of the letters or scrolls and buggers off. We see that Violet is still working on more streamers and we see the streamer vision. And oh no, the streamers are... Affecting ponies' mood, they're making them more violent. They're making them more uh, aggressive, and it seems that it's affecting the whole town. Uh, Mimir, as uh, uh, not really us, but she she's going to make more t- conspiracy theories, and also they need to find Twilight Sparkle and the gang. And talking about Spider Twilight Sparkle and the gang, um, we see that the ponies are back in Ponyville, and I'm gonna stop here because this is goddamn annoying. True. This scene here with all the ponies in town, I don't mind it, but when you read it the first time without really going into deep taking or look see like okay you don't, don't really matter because okay you just read word bubble and you see f- snake having tea okay that's unusual but hey that, that's funny haha the issue i have with this panel here is that they're covering the flying ponies they're covering rainbow dash yeah. and the other two ponies i got no idea who and if you really didn't really notice it, you got no idea. Yeah, that's true. And that's... And th- we don't even know what their names are. Yeah. I I know Minty. Because um, I have a G4 figure of her. Yeah, also I have a G4 figure of her. So yeah, that's how I know her. But, oh god damn. But anyway, carrying on. That was just my annoyance at this. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, before we get further into the whole what's happening in town, uh, let's just uh, trail back a little bit. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> well, now now we already know that the Smoonies were created from Grackle's magic, uh, much like uh, in the previous issue. Uh when Pinkie Pie compliments Violet Shiver that uh, she's good at making streamers, and it's become apparent that she's not the only one who's enjoying things outside their mission. Except for Shadow Storm, who's apparently just there on the side as compared to his female counterparts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and this becomes. <laughs> what? I I know, man. I know. It's like, wait, what? What, what are you? What? what uh, I I don't get. What? 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 What, what are you? What? What do you even do? He's just there to be the third wheel. Oh God! <laughs> because honestly, with what we see late uh, later by the end, Shadow Star doesn't really contribute anything to the plot, uh, much of the plot. He doesn't even have any character development, unlike uh, Violet Shimmer and Black Bell. 
yeah, I mean... It... He's just there to point things out and to make fun of them, but nothing else. Yeah, I mean, honestly speaking, it feels like if they didn't really write a Shadow in, they, they didn't really miss much. Like, he's... He, he didn't really affect the comic at all. Yeah. Like... Well, the only thing he, uh, he did of note was that uh, he might control the uh, Wonder Bolts to uh, make fun of uh, their captain. Yeah, but you could have Violet or Black Bell do that. So, it, oh man, it's one of those things, yeah, man. Yeah, that's true. <sighs> but anywho... <sighs> Yeah, uh, hold on, there's one other thing, well, there's these two panels that kind of, uh, uh, when they're setting up the party, where they're, <clears throat> I think there, uh, there's these two panels that could have been done better when uh, Black Bell tells, uh, tells Wild Chima they should destroy the streamers and she freaks out, mm -hmm. well, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to put it, uh, the next panel shows her falling after she screams, but it's making her look that uh, she fell after the yell, not as a result of being yelled at. So it kind of falls off, and I think it would have been better if, well, if the two actions were in the same panel. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, to me, when I first saw it, it's like, oh, Black Bell was shocked that um, Violet just um, sits, uh, I mean, kind of screams at her. And oh no, uh, th that's how she lost her balance. But the next line upended me. That means that she was kind of mm, attacked, probably. And it it's the same problem that I have before. Or yeah, it it's kind of the same problem where the word bubble is covering the art, the action. Yeah. <clears throat> so mm. we didn't really notice the uh, streamers attacking. Did they attack? If you take a look, see at the streamers, they're kind of lunging at her. If you can look at it without the pop yeah. bubble, uh, <laughs> yeah. the speech bubble blocking it. Yeah, and I don't see any motion lines to indicate that the, the streamers actually moved on their own. Yeah, that, that, that's the problem. Because at least if the word bubble's not there, we can use our imagination. But since the word bubble's there, we don't really see the cause and effect. Yeah, the, there's a bit of a composition for the panel pro, uh, issue here, where uh, where the word bubbles interfere with the actions. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it, it's getting annoying. That's all I can say. Yeah. Also, I could have sworn I'm uh, that uh, screaming face from Violet. Chira, I could have sworn I've seen it somewhere else, but I can't remember what was it. It's probably a starlight face or a twilight face. I I've seen it before or it, too. Or it's a rainbow dash face. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably rainbow and dash. And of course, yeah. And of course, Trent sees the, uh, what they're doing and he isn't one bit happy and decides to report back. However, here's where we hit another inconsistency later down the line uh, that I've uh, mentioned in the first issue, but we're gonna get uh, to that later. Alrighty then. <clears throat> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, the Enchanted Stream was created from Violet Chimber's magic not only became sentient, but they come to life and with the whole town already up in arms against itself, the smooth magic possessing her doesn't have a problem taking over. And as I said uh, in the last issue, uh, to my frustration, once the Korra has outlived her usefulness, she shoved back right back into that toolbox and never appears again. Oh. And this one panel makes it the point is the main six return, but we don't see her open the door to let him out of the room. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> ah, man. Oh. I know it's annoying. It's annoying. Yeah. But, okay, I'm done. All right, then. So, anywho, uh, I'm just going to summarize this because town is in shambles. <laughs> A lot of mayhem and destruction happened because of the streamers and whatnot. 
but the main six plus friends got no idea what happened. So uh, it seems like there's going to be a mob and Rarity just uh, tells everybody to head into her place. And somehow her place is vandalized and is looking like a mess, like somebody came in and wrecked the place. On a side note, we get Opal's Forbidden Adventure. We see that Opal is doing stuff, playing mean tricks, and somehow come across Trench and beat him up. So yeah, that, that's her thing. So we continue our way back to the ponies. The, the ponies are kind of at a loss because they got no idea what to do. Uh, they try to think of an idea of how to solve the problem. Uh, and it seems like the smooth is just making things worse. Uh, Opal comes in. Uh, take that as you uh, as, as it is. And Rarity noticed that hey, uh, there's something in Opal's mouth. Fluttershy so comes along and uh, takes a look-see at Opal and says, Oh, what's that smell? Uh, and one of the flying ponies from the G1 world says that my friends is lava goblin fur it reeks of sulfur and that gives twilight an idea redraw uh, and she somehow deduced that hey, by putting stuff together uh, especially crystals they can harness their power and uh, focus it into the pendant. And they managed to do that and they test it out in t at some uh, mannequins and they managed to destroy it. Oh boy, that's not great. So yay, they're, they're kind of making things work. They're kind of succeeding. And <clears throat> they think it works and they need to find a way and stuff like they, ju they just want to do more on a side note we see that the streamers are making their way towards the group and somehow siphon rainbow powers i don't know yeah i'm, I'm not sure what's happening honestly so anywho we go back to the witches uh trench is there holding a scroll and um, the witches says, oh poor baby, you've been uh, brutalized and whatnot. Uh, let, let, let's treat you up and whatnot. So Dyer takes a look-see at the uh, scroll that Trench brought in and it seems that, yay, hey, um, the schmooze are trying to patrol party and whatnot and yeah, they, they, they're not too happy with the whole thing and my goodness like this is just dumb <laughs> I, I guess you're jealous probably so uh they decide that okay um to if you want something to do be done right you do it yourself and <clears throat> they get into talking and whatnot and dyer here has a revelation she asks Gretkel what are the ponies made of? Uh, she says pizza doughs and smooths and uh, the most important ingredient is magic and is magic from Grekel and she just realized if those ponies work or uh, sorry if those ponies can move and work in that dimension that means she can perform magic too and with that, we have a badass scene of them uh, trying to go and crash party. With that, comic ends. Ah. So, um, well, what do you think, man? Well, uh, let's uh, go back a little bit. When they take refuge in Rarity Shop, Opal goes out the door, and instead of focusing on the ponies, uh, for, to show them that they're trying to test something is to connect to the next page to show that they're actually doing something. We get a tow pull going around town, which I think should have been its own page in, 
instead it just makes it feel like the ponies just went we tried nothing when and we're all out of ideas <laughs> that's just how makes it feel because th there's disconnect there should have been at least when they get into rarity shop they should uh, at least show a little thing like what they're gonna try to do instead of just putting Opal in the middle. Oh yeah, like yeah. I, I totally agree with that because it it doesn't really show a passage of time. Like it doesn't really show them doing stuff because uh all we for for all we know it's just that them coming into the shop brainstorming and nothing happens. Like I I kind of get what you mean like. Uh, they came in here, put stuff, and then go out to do something, and then oh, went back in. Like ah oh, man, yeah, exactly. Uh, as for the whole, uh, I wouldn't exactly say that what they did uh, with the uh, with the whole putting rainbow in a locket. I wouldn't say that that worked when the new weapon just obliterated the pair of dressing dummies. <laughs> I mean, what did they do wrong? I mean, they're targets, and the target obliterated, so that works too well. And in the next issue, we, we get to see them trying to control it and whatnot, so, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we're gonna talk about that another time. Mm. And uh, when we get back to the volcano, this is where the inconsistency that I mentioned earlier shows its face. When we first saw Trench... Uh, he uh, he saw the smoothies going over their primary function and he took proof with him. And we assumed that he was going, going right back to the volcano to report. But apparently uh, that's not the case for some reason. Because for some reason he opened the portal on the street outside. Just so that Opal would see him and attack him. So she would take proof with her to Twilight, to Twilight so she would know what to do next. Yeah, and and that's the part where this scene here, like with Opal, uh, cute, yes, but at the same time, makes no sense at all because you you set up the part where uh, Trench teleported in on the schmooze, which is in the hall or whatever it is, uh, ball hall, whatever, uh, and then you show him port again to a random location without the scroll so what does this mean like what what what, what is this and then when yeah. you come back he has a scroll it what and it's the size of his hand instead of like the big one that was twice the size of him yeah, man, like, oh, God. I, I mean, with the bandages, I can forgive because it's just a comedic effect. But it's it's one of those things where why is everything so inconsistent? Like, what was the story here? Okay, we... It's it's like... A, it, oh, man. It's one of those things where, okay, we want to get to point... From point A to point C. But you have to go through point B. But instead of going through point A, B, and C, you kind of went to D and then back to C. <laughs> Why? It makes... This doesn't work. Yeah. And it, okay. It's funny. It's comedic. Yeah. But it would have worked at least if Trench had the scroll on him then. And then you can say that, oh, he ported out of the hall into Ponyville probably just checking the scenario and seeing how things are maybe uh just checking how the schmooze are doing and then got attacked with uh, by opal then it can still work but without the scroll it's just not working man yeah exactly and as it was said earlier the the whole uh Opal scene kind of interrupts with something else that could have been done. Yeah, I mean, like, we, we could have just a montage of the ponies trying to solve the problem of whatever it is. Because, like, there's a huge gap. Like, wait, what, why is Pinkie Pie's hair uh, burnt? Why is Starlight uh, aching? Why is Twilight crying into a pillow? 
Why is Rainbow Dash sleeping? Yeah. So many problems. <coughs> yeah. But for the ending, uh, yeah, this is the part to where the two witches figure out that uh, just as Osmosis can use magic in another realm, so too can Grecker and Dire, uh, Greco and Dire. Although I'm not sure how much Dire will be helpful when we know now that she doesn't really use magic, and this is uh, compounded on the fact that the final bad has seen Greco's all fired up, but uh, Dire not so much. Yeah, I mean. She's just making a cool pose. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just thinking, like, what is Dyer's um, kit? Like, what does she do? I mean, she 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 is a witch. So, what are her specialty? Like, is she good with a broom? Uh, or is she uh, able to do some specific type of magic? W- without that, like, she's kind of nothing. And she's kind of... Like shadow, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly don't see. Uh, this this issue is there's so many things wrong, mm. and it just it it shows where the problems are that are just compounded page after issue after issue. Yeah, man. Like <laughs> it's I, I I get it. It's it's the setup. It's it's the part where. You show what's going on. And yeah, it's troubles coming to Ponyville and the witches are going to be there. But it feels like... How how do I put this? It feels like they're not really doing a good job at telling the story or really explaining it or whatnot. I mean, uh, I, I don't know, man. Like, it's hard for me to describe or hard for me to explain what doesn't really work. Uh, this issue was a bit let down. Yeah. And I'm not sure the final issue is going to help much. Oh man, that's to be expected, man. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I think... I think we've... Been gone all into all of this at this point true true but anywho um, with that we end the comic here and uh, just scrolling more below we see alternative covers from artists uh, there's a really really cool uh, cover by Samantha uh, Witt- Witt- Witten and it's a picture of Rarity with a, color, a, a G1 rendition of Rarity that's cool. We see Agnes Garboska colored by Silvana Bryce. Uh, it shows Twilight, Trixie, Rainbow Dash, and Sakura crossing a pit of lava. So yay, that's cool. And yeah. Oh man, this comic here, seriously, gosh. <sighs> anyway, um, comic ends. So yeah, we we given our thoughts. We given our thoughts. It's it's okay, but I, I feel like it's disappointing, man. Yeah, unfortunately, at this point, the cracks in the storytelling have become really obvious, and G One Ponies drive that home from the fact that they only became active participants of the plot in the penultimate issue, and they're not even G One uh, Kent and. Uh, counterparts of G4 cast which makes it all the worst because we all could have had so much fun with each uh, counterpart playing golf one another. Yeah, true, true. And it's one of those things where it, it could have been easily solved by segmenting segmenting parts of the story from three points of views. Uh, you have the G4 ponies, you have the uh, witches, you have the G1 ponies. But the way that they decide to tell the story is from the G4 point of view, the schmooze and the witches. And granted that, yes, the schmooze are very important to the story, but at the same time too, you're kind of denying the fans or the G1 fans of this story because they only came into the story in the last part of the third issue. 
and that's just a small bit. And with this one, they didn't really do much. I was surprised that they even want to come along. Yeah. True. Oh yeah, and uh, before we for, um, before I forget, I went to check, and yeah, apparently, uh, Multipony Special, the Rescue at Midnight Castle, uh, that's technically the first movie. <laughs> uh, Rescue at Midnight. It's the first thing that came out. Uh, Rescue at Midnight Castle is the T Rex one. Yeah. Ah, all right. And this one's moves is the part two then. Well. Uh, Actually, it's part um, part three because after the trick one, it's uh, escape from Ka uh, Katrina. Oh, the cat lady thing. Yeah, and then the third one's the smooth mm. one. The cat lady thing confused a lot of people back in the days. What's that? Because, huh? I am somehow confused with my feelings on this. <laughs> oh, I get it. It's the Lola Bunny effect. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> or Minerva Minx. <laughs> And so on. That's true. Mm -hmm. There's more. Our new generation have Judy Hopps. <laughs> yeah, but she's rather toned down compared to us. <laughs> That's also true. Woo! <laughs> Let's move on, folks. <laughs> so, yes. anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions of the show, you can contact us at thebasementgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the BS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Jacob, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakapontotkat. You can find me under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading story Termorizer, you can find it on Finfiction.com. And if you're interested in reading an original uh, story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on TalesoftheAshes.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check him out, guys. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PunavLive.com. Things are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob. Lucky Knight, Master of Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Yalkup. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Bye-bye. I hope Silver can join us next time. Yeah, man. Unless, yeah, unless the World Trust Squadron's on the work again. Oh, no, man. No, man. Like, <sighs> we, we have to get him on. It's been a while.